Hey everyone, this is, oh, before I do that, hopefully that worked. Uh, hey everyone, this is Charles Mitri from loungeboudoir.com. And today I'm gonna to start a new video series, which I'm calling Boudoir Pose Breakdown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one pose uh, per video and kind of do a deep dive analysis of the pose, um, kind of uh, what it represents, uh, what it's conveying emotionally, um, what it's conveying symbolically, if it's conveying anything of that nature, uh, if there's any subtext to the pose, uh, what makes it so effective and, and sort of how it's built or what I call the architecture of the pose. And today I'm going to be doing a pose called, or which I refer to as the icon. And I call it that because if there was one pose to represent all of boudoir photography, I would nominate this pose. I think it's very iconic, uh, hence the name, the icon. So I name my poses and I do that for two reasons. One is it helps me remember them and it's also easier for me to write them out when I'm creating a shot list uh, for a session. Now, I'm, I'm gonna be referring to some notes here uh, because what I do is I write a blog post first uh, about the pose to kind of get my thoughts out. And I'm a better writer than I am sort of speaking off the top of my head. So if you see me looking over to the side here, that's what I'm, I'm doing. But I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this screen. So if there is one pose to represent boudoir photography as a whole, I would nominate this, this pose to be that. Um, it has really everything a boudoir pose could ask for. It's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of boudoir poses. <laughs> Maybe I should call it Swiss Army knife. It shows the subject obviously from head to toe. Um, it has numerous triangles and and sort of undulating curves or S curves as I call them. Uh, it features pretty much uh, almost every part of the body. It's very elegant and uh, sensual and feminine. It has subtext, it suggests uh, sexual rapture. And it also contains uh, something that I call geometric contrast, which is a, uh, I don't know if it would be a theory, but it's a uh, concept that I sort of uh, came upon uh, so actually looking at this pose. This was a few months ago. So we'll talk about that as well. So I have a couple of examples here of this pose. Let me just kind of flip through them so you can see them. I have that one. And by the way, I have never had a client not buy this pose. It is included in every purchase uh, from a client that I've, I've ever had. So I have about five examples here. We'll go back to the uh, first one here. This is the first one I ever shot. Now it's best to shoot this pose on a hard surface. So you can shoot it either on a coffee table, hard coffee table that's strong enough, or as in these other ones, um, on a floor. Now. There are some disadvantages to shooting it on the coffee table. One is that the subject cannot extend her legs nearly as far or kind of her arms above her head, which is how I shoot the pose now. Unless she's gonna be, unless her arms are gonna be hanging over the edge, which may not look that great. If you do shoot it on a coffee table, it's gonna be much more compact. As you can see here, her legs are gonna be at a much steeper angle, but you know, it still looks good. So let's go to one that's on the floor here. Now with this one, you can see her, her body's extended a lot longer. Her arms are above her head. Her legs are a little bit at a wider angle here. So as some of you may or may not know, uh, triangles and S curves, the more of those you have in a pose, I think the more uh, flattering it is for the woman and also the more impact it's gonna have on the viewer. So as you can see here, we have a lot, a lot of triangles going on here. We have one here, we have another one sort of here. 
you know, sort of triangles within triangles. And then, then we have this sort of big triangle here. And then of course we have undulating curves. You can follow the flow, sort of the architect of her, of her body here. Let me get rid of some of these. It also has this curve here, this arc under her, under her back, which I think is, is really key to, to this pose. If you take a look at this shot here, um, her arm is blocking the curve of her back. And this was at a time when I, I wasn't um, really aware of the little nuances of this pose, but now the way I shoot it is I have the subject um, rest her arms above her head, bo both of them, and it, it won't block her face at all. So I do it in this one, and I do it in this one as well. And as you can see, we have that, let me uh, add a layer here. We have this, it shows the arch here very nicely. In this one, really big arch, it's real nice. And no arch here because her arm is blocking it. Arch there, and no arch here. Uh, that gets an X. <laughs> Let me erase that. All right, so now let's take a look at the structure of the pose or the architecture of the pose. The legs are staggered, obviously. Um, I like to have the front leg, what I call the front leg, closest to camera, and the back leg, I call the back, uh, furthest from camera, staggered, front leg a little lower than the back leg. Legs are, are very, very steep angle here, but if we go to this pose here, uh, Madison is six feet tall, she has very long legs. Um, here is a, a nice stagger. Sometimes you can get a little space right in here, uh, which is nice. Uh, my backgrounds are usually darker, but if you're shooting against a window, like here, like if she was on the floor, you would see that little space. Um, her legs would be more staggered, but there'd be like a little space. That's always nice, nice to get. Uh, toes are pointed. This is really important. This is like the finishing touch for this pose. As you can see here, Madison's toes are Pointed. And, and when you point the toes, it adds a buoyancy to the shot, a lightness. Uh, with Kilandra here, her feet are flat and it kind of weighs down the pose a bit. Uh, this is something that you know I missed. Uh, one thing about this pose, there's a lot of moving parts to this pose. It can be very difficult to get every single one of these points that I'm, I'm mentioning here. But you can tell the real difference between feet on the flat on the floor and pointed here. Um, obviously, the back is arched. Like I said, that's like the signature element of this pose is, is the back arch because you want um, you want that light coming through here. Oh, I know what I was saying. <laughs> Let me go back. The reason you want to shoot it on a hard surface is you want that light coming through. You want to create space underneath the back, you know, um, under the legs, under the feet. That's why you want to shoot it on a, on a hardwood floor or on a hard coffee table. If you shoot it on a bed, the bedding is gonna, you know, fill in all these gaps and you're not gonna have that, that space. So going back to a, a point I think I, I left off earlier. Let's get back to the structure. So the head is, is tilted back uh, so that the nose is sort of pointing at the ceiling. Or what, what you can say is like, try to point your chin to the ceiling because you want to get this nice profile of her face. Let me show you the uh, one here. See, And you want to have a clean background. This was shot in natural light. If you have a clean background, you can really see the outline of her features there. Um, if you have a busy background, that's, that's going to get lost. And um, here's another example, very clean background. And also with this one, well, her hands there, but you get the point. Uh, arms, like I said, 
I shoot this with both arms above the head now with that one, that one, and obviously she's got them more compact, which, you know, it still looks good, but you're gonna, you're gonna lose the uh, arch here underneath. Now let me tell you something about this arch. Um, let me erase some of these. There's gonna be wrinkling and folds from her garment. And what I do with every single one of these poses is I, I get rid of them with liquify, the liquify tool and the clone stamp tool. Um, it just makes the, the shot look a lot better. Let me see if I did it with these. Her arms in the way there. I'm sure I did it with this one. of the way there. Now with this one, there's a little, right there, there's a line there. And that's actually part of her outfit, which I don't really mind. It doesn't bother me too much. But be aware of that, um, of that part when, you, when you're in post. It cleans it up a lot. Uh, the hands are just uh, relaxed, uh, palms up. That's a good shot of her, of her hands right here. Eyes closed. Now, this is really kind of key. I've shot it both ways. And with the eyes open, it just looks weird. <laughs> okay. Like I said before, this pose kind of represents sexual rapture. And with the eyes closed, she's kind of lost in her own world of pleasure. That's the best way I can say it. Here her eyes are open, although it's hard, it's really hard to see, but it's, yeah, eyes closed is best. I kind of prep them for this pose. It's, a, it's like holding a yoga pose. This is a difficult, this is probably, I think one of the most difficult poses for, for someone to get into. And I tell them, once they're in this position, I tell them, um, take a deep breath through a slightly open mouth. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lift the chest, arch the back, and it's gonna sort of bring the head back as well. And then hold that and I'll, I'll take a series of shots and then I'll have them relax. And while they're relaxing, I'll look at the back of the camera and I'll, you know, I'll check the the, if the toes are pointed, um, if the arms are correct, if her legs are correct, and I'll make any little fine adjustments and then I'll say, okay, let's try it again. Uh, deep breath, everything lifts up. Like I said, it's a buoyant pose. Snap, 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 snap. And, um, and then that's it. Now I use a zoom lens. So when I'm snapping, I'm kind of going in and out at various degrees, um, as opposed to using a prime where I'd, I'd be, I'm on the floor, so I'd be like, you know, scooting up and scooting back. I, I, I can't do that anymore. That's why I got the uh, Tokina 24 to 70 2.8, which is a very sharp lens. So when I take a series of shots, I'm kind of varying my distance with that. Okay, I want to get into a concept that I came across, discovered, or, and that's something I call geometric contrast. Geo, geometric contrast. And this shot in particular displays a lot of that and all it is is when you place your subject your client um, your model um, who's curvy against uh, a backdrop that's linear and flat like a flat plane um, her curves are going to be emphasized more they're going to pop out more because there's going to be a juxtaposition of curve, curvature versus linear lines. And as you can see in this shot here, let me add a layer so I can draw. You have this straight line of the baseboard uh, above and below here that contrasts with her curvy body. The 
curvature of the landscape of the body like this. You also have this very flat wall behind her and flat floor in front of her. So the horizontal line and the flat plane of the wall and the floor serve as um, contrast to the curves of your subject here. Another thing that you get when you shoot on a hardwood floor and the, uh, the panels or the slats of the floor are perpendicular to your subject here is you get these leading lines. Now I'm, I'm just going to trace the faint little slats here, which is a really nice subtle element that a hardwood floor can give you, or even a tiled floor. Now the tiles are going to be square, but you'll have the one set of lines um, pointing towards your uh, subject here. Now if we go back to Madison here, now this hardwood floor runs, I can't draw a parallel line, but the slats run um, parallel to her body, so you don't get those leading lines. But here again, you get this nice baseboard that's very straight. And it's a subtle thing, but here's a perfect example. You have this line right here, and that is contrasted against the curve and undulating body right there. There's probably other shots where this is more pronounced. And um, like I said, it's a, uh, a stylistic element I'm kind of playing around with. I shoot kind of in a minimalist type fashion. I don't like a lot of things in the background for the very reason that I want to see my subjects form very clearly. I want to see all these curves and lines. If you have a hard um, coffee table that's long enough or hardwood floor in front of a window um, and you're not shooting this pose, um, I can almost guarantee you that your clients are gonna are gonna buy this pose if, if you if it's performed correctly. So that wraps up episode one of Boudoir Pose Breakdown. I'll be doing more of these so be sure to subscribe and hit that like button and I will see you at a future point in the YouTube universe.